So I'll read the question, you can pause the video, and then I'll answer. All right, and so a 41-year-old woman with multiple months of diarrhea and mild abdominal pain comes to the clinic. She has recently lost eight pounds and noticed occasional shortness of breath, hot flashes, and she denies fever and rectal bleeding. So labs are sodium is 136, potassium is 4.1, hemoglobin is 14, white blood cells are 6,000, and urinary 5-HIAA is positive. So what is the diagnosis? So when you read these step one questions, you essentially want to look for buzzwords so that can help lead you to the right answer, especially if you're crunched on time. And so in this case, you essentially, you know it or you don't for urinary 5-HIA. It's a buzzword for carcinoid syndrome. But the caveat here is that carcinoid syndrome isn't present, present in the answer choices. It's actually hidden in this one, gastrointestinal neuroendocrine tumor. Because you have to realize that these tumors cause carcinoid syndrome and that's how it um, creates this metabolite and therefore you have your answer. With that being said, what happens if they didn't give you this? Uh, so this really makes this question a lot easier, but how would you still get to the same answer even without this buzzword? So you start off with looking at the other answer choices. So for example, illness anxiety disorder is the first one you can look at. And so for basic test taking strategy, psychiatric il illnesses are important to have in your differential, but you should rule out everything else in terms of GI problems before you start looking at psychiatric illnesses. So we can put that on the back burner for now. Now let's look at the other GI issues, right? Is the, the rest, all four of these are GI issues. So ulcerative colitis is a good one to have on your differential since she's relatively young and, and she's having diarrhea. Now with that being said, ulcerative colitis typically has bloody diarrhea, so it's less likely since they explicitly say she denies rectal bleeding. And the other, the other issue is if she was having bleeding, then her hemoglobin might be lower and she'd have iron deficiency. But in this case, hemoglobin seems to be normal. And next, we, we can rule it out because ulcerative colitis is typically associated with fever. Uh, and in this case, she denies fever. So it's one more thing to, to rule it out. And when I say rule it out, we can, we can once again put it to the side for now because we can't definitively, definitively rule out things just because they're, they don't have some of the symptoms, but we know it's less likely. So moving on from there, we can look at gastric adenocarcinoma. So gastroadenocarcinoma is also good to think about since cancers can also cause weight loss. And whenever you have unintentional weight loss, malignancy should always be on your mind. So the symptoms typically associated with that are dysphagia, which is trouble or painful swallowing, and nausea. And the patient will typically say that they, they get full very fast. And so there could be occult bleeding also in, in a gastro gastric adenocarcinoma. However, the CBC could show iron deficiency anemia, but in this case, hemoglobin is normal. So that means, once again, we can set gastric adenocarcinoma aside for now. Okay, so next, irritable bowel syndrome. And so irritable bowel syndrome is also good to have on your differential since it's pretty common. However, um, you need, usually need to have two of the three Rome criteria. And in this case, we do have the increased uh, diarrhea. However, the, the three Rome criteria are abdominal pain related to defecation. And in this case, we don't really know when this abdominal pain occurs relative to the diarrhea. And the other two are change in stool frequency and change in stool form. So we have the diarrhea and we're not too sure about the time frame of the abdominal pain relative to defecation. And then we don't know about the change in stool form. So we're not too sure about, the, about this patient fulfilling the Rome's criteria. So once again, we can set this on the back burner for now. And so in this case, I haven't ruled out these other GI problems because even though they're less likely due to the logic I, I sh um, talked about, we still have to keep in mind that they could be, um, they could be like an atypical presentation. So the one thing that definitively makes this D is this urinary 5-HIA. But as I'm coming to, uh, coming to explain, 
um, there, there are also a few other clues when we start looking at D um, and why it's the answer. So if they didn't give this, if they didn't give this clue of the metabolite, what you can also look at is the occasional shortness of breath and the hot flashes they mention. So the typical presentation of carcinoid syndrome, which is what this question is referring to, has wheezing, diarrhea, and flushing facial flushing to be to be exact. And so in this case, they hint at that with the occasional shortness of breath. So they're not going to directly come out and say wheezing because that'd be too easy. And they're not going to come out and say flushing because once again, that's too easy. And so this is a trick they like to use a lot often. I've seen this on tests where they, where they put hot flashes, especially for a female patient. And that way they can confuse you and uh, cause you to not think about it too much, but this is actually referring to the flushing she's having. So in combination of these two symptoms and the diarrhea, and then finally uh, the urinary 5-HIA, we know for sure that it has to be D. And so this is a case where they it's relatively straightforward, but even if they didn't have this, you could reason your way to the right answer. So I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.